I am still working my way through my top 100 images for the photo book that I'm producing. But I've added more images, I've taken some images out, I've resorted the catalogue, so it's a bit pointless me telling you what number image I'm up to. We're just going to produce another image. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 145 of Understanding Dark Table. I'm currently sitting at about 113 images, so I'm actually going to have to cull a few. But that's a good problem to have, because what I'll do is I will continue to work my way through this collection. When I get to the end, because who knows, in between now and then, I may add more images and I you know, will then have even more to cull. But at least at that point, I will have more than 100 images and I'll then be able to go through very quickly and go, OK, these are the weakest links within this group. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. For now, I have got a new duplicate of this image, which I've called DT 4.8.1, because that's the version of Darktable I'm working in. And we are going to reset this back to square one, shall we call it. So, got an image here of Kath in an infinity pool in Sri Lanka in 2019. I know I've made a big thing in the past. I, I like all my images to be 16.9 because I generally view them on my computer monitor. But for this project, I don't need them to be 16.9. They can be whatever aspect ratio works for the image. But as it turns out, uh, if I was to go with a freehand crop, what I want to get rid of is this concrete at the bottom edge of the frame, this palm tree on the right, and then we'll see where we're at from there. So we've got something like that. Just like that, I feel like there's a bit too much negative space above Kath. So I do want to bring that down and yeah, I'm probably going to end up at something very close to a 16 by 9 format. Do I want to bring in the left edge so that she's more central on the horizontal axis, right? So do I want to do that? I don't know. I don't think I like it there. I, I think I do like her being just a little bit to the right of center and looking out of the frame because it kind of adds a bit of mystery is like, what is she looking at? Obviously, she was looking out into the ocean, but Maybe there was a ship out there. Maybe there was someone drowning in the surf. Who knows? I'm just, you know, being silly. Okay, so we will go with a crop like that. That might be 16.9 or something close to it. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. So we'll jump over to our active tab. In terms of what we've already got in the pixel pipe, our white balance, going to leave that at D65. Highlight reconstruction, I don't even need that on. Because as you can see from the histogram, there is absolutely nothing clipped in this image. It was an overcast day. So I'm going to turn that off. No sense having it on if we don't need it. Orientation is auto. That's great. Exposure. Because I'm using Filmic RGB as my tone mapper, Aurelian has stated in the past, I and mean, I've mentioned this multiple times on this channel, get your mid-tones to where they need to be. And that is not a scientific process. It is simply eyeballing it for yourself and going, where do my mid-tones want to be? And then worry about the highlights and the shadows later because Filmic will handle that. So in terms of mid-tones, let's have a look at this. For me, I'm thinking mid-tones is probably the skin on her arms. That's kind of my, my reference. So I'm thinking maybe somewhere around about there. What are we, 1.4, 1.5 stops? Okay, moving on. We've done our crop. Color calibration. I've gone for a daylight white balance. And to be honest, I think that's looking pretty good. If I was to click the eyedropper, eh, it's changed it a little bit. 4225 Kelvin, which is just a little bit higher than what I had. I'll go with whatever the eyedropper has picked up on. From here, where do we go? I will go over to the color balance RGB module. Let's chuck in a bit of vibrance, get the colors to pop a little bit, bring up some of the gold in that sand, warm up the skin tones a little bit. 
In terms of our brilliance, let's see how far we can push this without things getting wobbly. I think that's probably as far as I want to push the highlights. I know I haven't pushed them all the way to the edge of the histogram, but I feel like it's just going to cook calf if I push that too far. Yeah. Oh, I've actually got my overexposure indicators turned on. I didn't even realize I had that. Oh, and guess what? I don't have Keymon running. One of these days, people. One of these days. I will remember to start it before I start the video, but today is not that day. Okay, shadows. We want to drop the shadows a little bit, but I will be paying close attention to her t-shirt because I don't want to lose detail in the t-shirt. So I'm thinking somewhere about there is probably as far as I want to push that. In terms of chroma, let's give it a little bit of a tweak in the midtones, a little bit less so in the shadows. Highlights probably don't need it. Ooh, just a just a smidge, not too much. That's looking pretty nice. Four ways tab. No, I don't want to add any color grading to this. I kind of like a natural processed look, if that makes sense. Not, not something that's deliberately tinted. So I think I'm actually going to leave color balance RGB there. I have been using the contrast equalizer as my sharpening module of late. And I've got a preset here called my sharpening. And as you can see, it is simply increasing the contrast at the fine detail end of the graph. So if we were to zoom in, we would see that it's affecting fine detail, but not really affecting things where there isn't detail. In other words, the coarse end of the graph. So we turn that back on and we've got sharpening happening here. Now, you may have noticed in the contrast equalizer module that I have another preset of my own called even skin tone. And this is something that I've just developed in the last 24 hours because little sidebar, I just had a new portrait shot by a good mate of mine, Doug Coleman. And I came up with this even skin tone to try and smooth out my skin texture. Because what I found when I looked at the images of myself was like, oh man, my skin is so blotchy. And I felt a little bit self-conscious about that. And I didn't want to... Ah, uh, look, you'll see what it does in a sec. Okay, so what we will do is we will add a new instance of Contrast Equalizer and we'll call this skin and I'll call the other version Sharpen. Okay, so we are going to go with even skin tone. And what I am going to do now is go for a, well, I've already got a drawn and parametric mask. That's part of the preset. So now what I'm going to do is pick up the skin like so, and we will just mouse wheel with the shift key to bring that edge in a little bit like so. And we will then do Another one on her face. And we'll just do another quick bit around her nose, like so. And another one on her forehead. And so what that's done is just, well, as you can see, I've rolled off the coarse end to have less contrast. So it's in areas where there is not fine detail, it is reducing the amount of contrast. So if we toggle that off, toggle it back on, and you can see that I've got to tidy up the, uh, the paths there, which I will now do. All right, there's a little bit of a pimple there, which we might just clean up with the retouch tool. Now, obviously she's got water on her skin and that's what's creating all of those specular highlights. So I'm not worried about trying to remove that because that's part of the scene. That was just water on her skin. So there we go. Uh, anything else that I would want to do with this image? 
probably just go and have a look at Filmic and see where we are at. So we jump over to the Scene tab. We'll try pushing our highlights right out and see what happens. Yeah, that's actually looking okay. And in terms of our shadows, I think we're pretty much at the limits of, yeah, I don't want to lose the, the detail in the t-shirt there. If I, if I push that too far, I start crushing all of those blacks. Could potentially go RGB primaries and maybe just crank up some blue purity, just to give the blue a little bit more pop in the swimming pool there. And we'll just go a little more cyan in the blues, toggle it off. Toggle it back on. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So we'll just call that water. Like I said, I'm not one for toning images all that often. I do tend to tone things if I'm going monochrome, but for color images, I generally want to get the white balance as correct as I can and then just leave it there. Unless I was deliberately trying to you know, make it look like an old faded photograph from the 80s or something like that. But in this instance, that's not where I'm going. So yeah, this is it. If I wanted to do a vignette, and I'm not necessarily convinced that I do, uh, we'll just call that exposure global because that is our global exposure. And then we'll do a new instance, which we'll call vignette. And for this, we will go with a drawn mask make this nice and big and we'll straighten that up with the control key and we'll just do something like that and then we'll drop the exposure a little and we want to swap that around because we're currently selecting the inside and we actually want to select the outside so we'll go like so and turn the path off so that we're not looking at that I don't want to go too far. I think that you can really overdo the vignette very easily if you're not careful. I'm thinking somewhere around there, maybe a third of a stop. That's probably as far as I would want to push a vignette. Anything more and it looks obvious and fake. Even that's bordering on looking a little bit fake. I'm constantly, I don't know about you guys, but my eyes constantly dart back and forth between the big view of the picture and the thumbnail view of the picture. Because quite often I just find that the thumbnail gives you the ability to, to take in the whole scene without your eye having to move. As humans, when we look at things, the area of what actually is in focus is only a very small percentage in the center of our field of view. So anything that encompasses a broader area than that, your eye actually has to dart around to focus on all of the various bits of the image. So when I'm looking at the, the large version of the image in the middle of the screen, your eyes do have to move around to look at all of the different parts of the image. But if you look at the thumbnail version, you can kind of take the whole image in in one go. And I think that's a great little hack that you can have a big view and a small view all at once. I don't know, maybe it's not really a hack, but yeah, I just find great value in that. So I'll leave that vignette in there. Yeah, it sort of helps to draw your eye to the center of the image. So yeah, we'll call it done. Uh, just to see where we came from, I will take a snapshot of this and then we will jump back to where? White balance. Yep, white balance. So that's where we started and our snapshot looks like that. There we go. Alrighty, I think I will leave it there. Once again, I am messing around with the softbox. At the moment, I've got it on a it's, a, it's just a straight vertical stand, but it's actually resting on the top of the desk and leaned back against the wall. But I have just ordered myself a vertical stand with a C clamp, so I'll be able to actually clamp it on the rear edge of the desk and have it stand actually vertical instead of at a kind of wonky minus 30 degree angle that it is at the moment. I was using the little light cubes, which 
I don't know if you actually ever saw them, because I don't think I actually showed them to you. These are little Ulanzi VL120s. And these are great, but you got to charge them up. And I've had a couple of instances where they ran flat while I was in the middle of recording a video. And the other downside to these is whilst, yes, they do have these silicon diffusion thingamajiggies on them, they still represent a fairly small light source. And I just find that a larger light source, like this softbox is a 60 by 60 centimeter, just gives a more flattering light. So I sort of have been kicking this around over the last couple of weeks as to what I was going to do with the lighting. And I think that the the vertical seat stand with the C clamp with the softbox in this position is probably what I'm going to do going forward. All right. I think that will do it for now. Questions, comments, sing out down below and I'll catch you in the next one.